this, this is straight up mathematics. Let's do let's do some political mathematics again. Apologies if I'm not reading uh, the chat. I'm just gonna uh, connect this up to mathematics, right? So check this out. In Canada, okay, political mathematics. This is where mathematics comes into play, right? Canada considers itself, right? States that Canada is a democracy. Democracy, right? Okay. Here's Canada. Canada. Right. In the last elections in Canada, we had the following parties. We got the liberals. Liberals. We got the conservatives. Okay. We got the NDP. NDP. We got the Parti Copacua. Okay. The that's mainly in Montreal in uh, Quebec, right? We got the Greens, okay, and we got the People's Party. Okay, let me let me make enough room for this, right? So we got the Liberals, Lib. We got the Conservatives. We got the NDP, NDP. We got the Parti Quebecois. Um, I forget what the, 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 it's not Parti. It, it's uh, anyway the the party is in Quebec, right? We got the Greens, and we got the People's Party, People's PCP, People's. Can, we're gonna call them People's Party. I think it's People's. I'm just gonna say PP. Okay, People's Party. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six different parties. Okay. The Liberals want a minority. Okay, I'm going by memory. Okay, so these guys are in power. This is sort of in order of descent, I believe, right? So these guys were number one. Right? They ended up getting like 30% of the votes. Okay, 30% of the vote. Okay, in Canada, population is around 40 million. Okay, 40 million. 40 million. It's a little bit less than that, 38 million or something, but let's say 40 million. Okay. The conservatives got like 34% of the vote, I believe. 34% of the vote. Okay. And the reason these guys uh, have power is because of certain things that have been put into place uh, in Western democracy in the Canada, United States, where, um, where you protect citizens of a nation from rule of the majority right so for example rule of the majority is this let's assume 51 percent in a country vote for a certain party and 49 percent vote vote for the other party well true democracy the 51 percent get to rule right there's laws in place in canada and united states that says you know what you can't just have 51 percent of a nation deciding everything for the 40 for the hundred percent of the population it doesn't work by the way that's, that's the idea right population because they could come out the 51 percent could say oh yeah that 49 percent is an enemy to our country we have to kill them all <laughs> that's the majority the majority votes i think george carlin uh, explained it best i think it was george carlin saying that uh democracy is like this it's like 10 people being in a room and nine uh, people vote to sodomize you and one person votes not to sodomize you you being the one voting for people not to sodomize you 90 percent voted to sodomize you so uh, they take care of business right majority voted for it. democracy right you have to have protections to protect people the minority from the majority right that's a no that's a no-brainer Okay. Now, NDP, I forget how many seats they got. How many seats did they get? Uh, I know they got around um, 3 million votes. Okay, so we're going to, this is percentage. We'll, we'll look this up as well. So NDP got 3 million votes, million votes. And they ended up having uh, how many seats? I forget how many seats. We're, we're going to look this up, actually. That way I'm not going by memory. This is numbers i can't remember all the numbers right but i know this ndp got around three million votes the people's party got around eight hundred thousand votes 800k okay 
the People's Party got no seats in government. The NDP is supporting the Liberals, and the NDP with the Liberals, with the number of percent of the votes and the number of seats, we're going to look this up, and you tell me if the mathematics makes sense to you, right? They end up governing Canada, right? We'll do the math. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. Apologies, I, I wasn't planning to go in this direction, but since we are, uh, might as well get you the data. I wish I realized. Uh, Canadian election results. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Nice. Okay. So the Liberals got 30. 3% of the vote, 33% of the vote. The Conservatives got 34%. The da, 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 a Bloc Quebecois, Bloc Quebecois got, uh, ch, 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 let me bring this up, are they in order? Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, this is gonna be in order, cool. Uh, the NDP got 16% of the vote, okay. The the green that should be the green. Greens got six point five percent of the vote. Six point five. The Bloc Quebecois got uh, seven point six percent of the vote. Okay, and the People's Party got one point six percent of the vote. Okay. The number of seats is like this. Uh, seats one. These guys. The Liberals won 160 seats. The Conservatives won 119 seats. The NDP won 25 seats. The, ba -ba -ba, the Greens won three seats. The Bloc Quebecois won 32 seats. Right. And the People's Party won zero seats. The number of people that voted, the popular vote, check this out, check this out. The popular vote was this, 5.5 million, oops, 5.5 million. Okay, we'll do it with decimals, that way it's clear. Okay, 5.5 million voted for liberals, 5.7 million voted for conservative, 3 million voted for NDP <laughs> crazy 1.3 million voted for Bloc Quebecois 400,000 0.4 voted for the Greens and 0 0.84 okay voted and I'm rounding this one up <laughs> okay and I'm rounding this one this is legit right so, look at these numbers. You tell me where there might be issues here, right? Where there might be issues here. Let me scroll down. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, I'm skipping a whole bunch of chat because I want to get caught up with the data that I'm putting up here. Greetings, Nakushka. Greetings, Void Hook. How are you doing? George Carlin was a gift to humanity, SQ, indeed. Politics and math, results. Parti Quebecois, thank you very much, uh, Plutonic Flores. Maybe maybe the autism will have to play a large part in the new revolution. Indeed, indeed. Allow, boing. Uh, makes, zero, makes zero sense, Lord SQ, indeed. Right? So take a look at this thing. If we do a little bit of mathematics, right here, just the simplest dinghy's calculator that's all you need like a little dinghy calculator like this you'll get you'll get you all you'll understand the ridiculousness of this thing right you'll understand the ridiculousness of this thing now the way it works is these guys these clowns here these guys are clowns together with these clowns actually almost everybody's a clown these two clowns, okay, 
and I should have reordered this together with Party Kubikwa. Right? They t they've teamed up and they're doing whatever it is they're doing. Right? They're doing whatever it is they're doing. Okay. These seas are not given by votes and I not know uh, of much dependence on them. Yeah. Not by yet. How are you doing? Uh, Plutonophones. Seeds can be distributed district wise, for example, but the percentage in relation to the absolute numbers of votes. Indeed, indeed. Uh, SKL. In Belgium currently, the three smallest parties are running the country, while the two biggest ones that the people want are locked in opposition. Right? So, over here, if you want to find out how this works, Right? And how this works, check this out. Check this out. <laughs> so NDP, NDP versus People's Party. People's Party. PC, I think it's PCP, People's. Let me, let me get the right thing for it. Where is it? Let's see if they give the right thing for it. Uh, <laughs> PP, yeah, it is P. Oh no, that's PP. Oh, I don't know what the PPC, PPC, People's Party of Canada, PPC. Let's call it PPC officially. PPC, PPC. Oops, we're using blue. PPC, right? Versus PPC, right? If you do this, all you gotta do is just take this and divided by this if you want to look at the um, the numbers that way the percentage that way oh let me bring up the chat as well it went behind doink right so if you want to look at it this way you could go okay two ways to look at it really you could go three divided by 0 0.84 that'll give you how many more uh, how many times more uh, how many times more people voted for NDP than PPC? So you just go three. Is it gonna work? Oh yeah, there it is. Nice. Two, three. <laughs> I haven't used this forever. <laughs> like this, it's not even. It's not even working. <laughs> it's only a little thing. Three divided by point eight. For like that's how the numbers are going up. <laughs> I don't use the calculator very often, and if I do, it's usually a computer. So let's use the computer calculator. I should have prepped myself for this. So check this out: three divided by three, three divided by point eight four. Right. So they got three point six times. Three point six times so NDP got 3.6 times more votes than PPC they end up getting 25 seats PPC ends up getting zero right or you can look at it this way 0 0.84 right um, you could do um, should we do it that way let's see um, 0.84 divided by divided by 3 Doink. sure let's do it this way divided by three and this gives you 28 percent right so 28 uh, percent PPC got 20 percent of the votes that the NDP got they get zero and these guys get 25 it gets worse if you do it compared to Bloc Quebecois right Bloc Quebecois versus PPC right you do it this way, it's 1.3 over 0 0.84. We'll just do it this way, it's simple enough, right? So 1.3, 1 1.3 divided by 0.84, doink. So this ends up being 1.5 times, 1.5 times. So, Bloc Quebecois got 1.5 times the votes of the PPC, but they got 32 seats and these guys got zero. 
<laughs> right? And these guys are the true opposition in Canada, by the way. True opposition. These guys are the ones that are challenging mandates and all this jazz, right? Really, true opposition is these guys. There is no opposition here, really. This one's slowly coming about, but in the last three years, everything that these clowns and these clowns with collaboration with these two clowns, right? Liberals with these two clowns, we're pushing these guys, we're pretty much supporting, as well as these guys, right? So the only true opposition really in in Canada, the only true opposition in Canada is these guys right now. Okay. Is these guys. And they have been the opposition since day one. Okay. They met with the truckers. They they opposed uh, mandates. They they did a lot of things, right? What's the solution to this? What's the solution to this? Okay, what's the solution to this? Now, there is a precedent set throughout history where people of a certain mindset, when they find out they're being discriminated against, they talk to each other and decide to start moving into regions and populating those regions so they can control the government, the local government, and then they slowly expand from that, right? So one of the solutions here is people who voted for the PPC, if they all get together and decide to move to a certain province that has a certain number of seats mandated to in the federal government, and they all vote the same, right? And then they're gonna have representation in government right they'll have power right right now they're divided right so one of the places that we know this took place in recent history was i believe with the mormons where they were being persecuted so the leadership there said you know what let's pack it all up we're all going to ohio did they go to ohio uh, idaho i think they went to idaho right is that where the mormons are set up uh but i'm not pushing their philosophy by the way i'm just I'm not pushing anything. I'll, I can honestly tell you right now, as a disclaimer, I voted for these guys, <laughs> right? I'm one of these guys, right? So in the last election, I voted for these guys, right? Because the true opposition to draconian mandates, draconian measures, right? But I'm not telling you which way to vote for because majority of Canadians voted the other way, right? Utah, Utah, thank you very much. I do hope. What am I thinking? Oh, I know. <laughs> so they moved to Utah, right? They moved to Utah. Uh, Latter-day Mormon saints with the metal tablets and John Brown or something like this. I don't know what the philosophy is, <laughs> right? They packed up and they all went to Utah. And in the last few, in the last few decades, they slowly built power where they control Utah. They have a huge say in policy. They have multi-billion dollar, they control multi-billion dollar corporations, okay? And they're protecting their community, okay? So that's one of the solutions to people that do not have a voice, right? Okay. And this has occurred in different places as well. Sometimes the centralized governments come in and crush them, right? Uh, it is what they do. It is what they do. Thank you very much, Nabushka, as well. Uh, the far, far, farm New York City pharmacy. Is that the pharmacy? <laughs> first time, um, salutations, first time chat. Thank you for popping in to our live stream. Plutonic Polish, Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith Jr. was an American religious leader and the founder of Mormonism and the Latter-day Saint movement. At the age of 24, Smith published the Book of Mormon, and by the time of his death, 14 years later, he had attracted tens of thousands of followers. Yeah, From tens of thousands of followers to controlling a state and building multi-billion dollar corporations. Ronnie, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome back. 
I was just catching up with chat. Right? Da, 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 da. Interesting. Canadian politics, and this occurs in a lot of uh, Western uh, societies uh, with the elections and stuff like this. But there are rules in place to protect the minority from the majority, right? Really, there are rules in place, right? It's called, uh, um, I forget what it's called. I put a video out on it in 2016 because people were asking me about, uh, or 2017 or something like that. People were asking me about the elections uh, in the United States, uh, how the results were for the 2016 election. And uh, I put out a video saying, that people were saying, oh, it should all just be, and I don't agree with it all being just the number of votes that people get should represent in thing because, again, uh, centers of power will have a higher population. And if we just go with center of power, then they will be able to control everyone. And that doesn't work. That doesn't work at all, right? Just take it on a global scale, right? So for example, right now, China, has one point let's say five billion people india going getting close to 1.5 billion people there's like eight billion people in the world right so three billion people live in china china plus india control three billion people three billion right total population in the world eight billion total eight billion right that's what is that? Three divided by eight. What percent? Three divided by eight. Doink. Three divided by eight. That's thirty-seven point five percent of the world, right? Thirty-seven point five percent of the world. If, if, if. Let's assume we had a. Uh, uh, Crafter, how are you doing? I heard China actually actually has only 1.3 billion, uh, like they overcounted their population or something. Possibly, I would say uh, my guess would be that they may be undercounting, right? So we'll round it up to one and a half, because I, I can almost guarantee you India is undercounting, right? <laughs> like there's no way they have the statistics to India to count them, right? Uh, most likely, anyway. But let's assume together they control 3 billion people. That's 37.5% of the global population. According to Canadian type of results that you see here, 37, if in, in Canada, if a party gets 37.5% of the vote, usually they'll have a majority. That means they can do anything they want. So if we just go by one vote, one person, one vote, and whoever gets control gets to do anything they want to anyone they want right if there's no protections put in place for that government right then china and india if it was a world government they would get to decide what everyone does in the world right that that's tyranny of the majority right there's laws in place i know in the united states in canada it's not looking very good uh, they took the Charter of Rights and flushed it down the toilet, right? These guys, these clowns, these clowns, and these clowns with collaboration of those clowns, and with the silence of these clowns, they f took the Canadian Charter of Rights and flushed it down the toilet, right? These guys were the only people that were opposing it, and they had no seats in government, right? They're they're just a political party, and they were giving interviews and they were being blacklisted and labeled as everything under the sun to silence them okay so keep this in mind this is mathematics in politics extremely important extremely important and this is just the the tip of the iceberg when it comes to once you understand mathematics you're uh, you're able to look at the numbers and come up with your own conclusions and try to think about different types of systems if they make sense or if they don't make sense right and why certain things work a certain way right why you know why are there rules in place I know in the United States to protect the minority from the majority then why there was rules in place to a certain degree in Canada as well but these clowns 
with the silence. See, these clowns flushed that down the toilet, right? They said no protection of the minority from the majority. They even flushed down the Nuremberg Code, right? They said no Nuremberg Code. New, look into Nuremberg Code and you'll understand what what just happened in Canada since we're talking about Canada. Okay. I'll end my political slant on this uh, for now. And I don't go this political slant with individual students personally. I would just give them, because my students know mathematics, the ones I work with anyway, that if I was going to give them this type of data, I would just give them this data and ask them why they would think that this is legitimate or not legitimate. And then I would explain the role of the majority aspect of things. Okay. Fun. Love math just gives you a certain perspective that you will not get if you didn't know any of this and just looked at names and went oh okay right you look at the numbers you look at the mathematics you look at the data you go wait a second 